commentary. This is the tenth state, the last of the gates of the consciousness skanda. If you can pass through this gate, then you don't have to worry anymore. There is no further danger. Unfortunately, this final step is not an easy one to take. At this point, he's offered by just a tiny bit. It is said if you are offered by a has breath at the beginning, you will miss it by a thousand miles at the end. If you're just a tiny bit off at the start, you'll be way off at the stage of fusion. This state is one in which he realizes a profound brightness based on fusing the mind with perfect enlightenment. At this time, the doctrine of perfect enlightenment is about to merge with his permanent true mind and he attains the purity and brightness. He strays far from perfect penetration. Nevertheless, he has not matched with the domador of perfect, perfect penetration of the ear because he still has attachments, and he turns his back on the city of Nirvana, going against the wonderful fusion of Nirvana, thus sowing the Caesar for being unable to surpass his attachment to the brightness of perfect enlightenment. He cannot get past his attachment to that state of perfection. There is still that tiny bit which he does not understand before he breaks through the consciousness skanda. If at this point he can break through without succumbing to crazy interpretations, then he will have broken through all five skandhas. When the five skandhas have, have been broken through, he will attain the positions of the ten faiths, the ten dwellings, the ten practices, the ten transferences, and the ten grounds. Then he can rest assured that he will attain Buddhahood. Sutra Ananda, these ten states of dhyana are due to crazy explanations on the path of cultivation. Relying on them, the cultivator becomes confused and claims to have attained complete realization before actually having done so. All these states are the result of interactions between the consciousness skanda and his mental effort. Commentary Ananda, you should pay special attention to this point and understand it well. You should recognize the demonstrates that appear in these ten states of dhyana, these ten dharma doors of contemplation in stillness, these ten states which appear in the cultivation of dhyana are due to crazy explanations on the path of cultivation. Relying on them, the cultivator becomes confused and claims to have attained a complete realization before actually having done so. At this point, although he has not attained the way and realized the fruition, he says, I've realized the fruition, not having realized the first fruition, he says he has, not having attained the second, third, and fourth fruitions either. He claims he has. He has not become a Buddha, yet he claims he has. If you ask him how he became a Buddha, he doesn't know. A Buddha who doesn't know how he attained Buddhahood is certainly a muddled Buddha. But Buddhas have uh, all have perfect understanding and there are no muddled Buddhas. If he's muddled, then he's just a ghost, goblin, demon, or weird creature who doesn't understand the truth. All these days are the results of interactions between the consciousness Ganda and his mental efforts. These are tricks of the consciousness skanda. When you work hard, the consciousness skanda battles against your skill. If you have the slightest bit of greed, lust, or false thinking, you will enter a demonic state. If you become attached to this state, then you will be possessed by a demon. You will come up with some crazy theory, and once you do, it will be very hard to smash through it. Even if others point out to the cultivator that he is incorrect, he won't believe them. He will think, what do you know anyway? I am already a Buddha. What you are saying is not right. Even if they tell him, he won't believe them. That is why such states occur. January 1983 Just now, Guo Di said, most of us, 
have placed the state of breaking through the five skandhas too high, and he's absolutely right. The Hot Sutra says when Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara was practicing the profound Pranaparamita, he illuminated the five skandhas and saw that they are all empty, and he crossed beyond all suffering and difficulty. Avalokiteshvara, the ones who contemplate at ease, was sitting there meditating, advancing, advancing step by step in his cultivation of dhyana. Heading towards the stage of wisdom, he was able to understand that the five skandhas are empty. Once a person sees the skandhas of form, feeling, thinking, formations, and consciousness as empty, he will no longer be obstructed by them, since they no longer cover him over. His wisdom comes forth. At this point, he has not, by any means, realized any fusion or left the triple realm. He has some wisdom which allows him to leave suffering and attain bliss. Yet he has not really left suffering and attained bliss. He still has a ways to go. He still has to deeply enter the sutra treasury and have wisdom like the sea, and to not be turned by states. Right now, he is still being turned by the states of the five skandhas. Not only has he not realized the fourth fusion, he hasn't even reached the first fusion. An ahata of the first fusion can walk without his feet having to touch the ground. His feet are about half a centimeter off the ground, so they never get muddy, no matter where he goes. That's because he has eradicated the eighty-eight grades of delusion of views. The delusion of views involves being confused by the state one is faced with and becoming attached to it. When one realizes the fusion, the eyes see forms, but inside there is nothing. The ears hear sounds, but the mind doesn't know. One sees everything as empty, and one has no attachments. So how could one catch on fire and become possessed by a demon? There are no demons to encounter and no fires to catch. Being confused by principles and engaging in discrimination is called the delusion of thoughts. Searches of the second and third fruition must cut off the delusion of thoughts. If someone had already cut off the the delusions of thought while cultivating in the realm of the five skandhas, would he be entertaining all kinds of white thoughts and speculations? Would he make all kinds of discriminations as he investigates the principle? No way. He would be able to decisively resolve any matter which comes up without having to discriminate and speculate about it. Those false thoughts all come from his consciousness. His consciousness is constantly discriminating the subtlest details. Not only has he not realized any fusion, he can't even ascend to the heaven of neither thought nor non-thought. Why not? Because he hasn't even seen through and put down his body, he is still going around in circles, expending effort on that stinking skin bag. Do you think that someone who has broken through the five skandhas has has realized some fusion? Breaking through the five skandhas is a path that, that has to be walked, and he is walking on that path. All of you should clearly recognize this state. Don't be like the unlearned Bishu. Who mistakenly thought that the fourth dhyana heaven was the fourth fusion? A person who has broken through the five skandhas is only at the level of the first or second dhyana. He is still in the very early age, uh, stages of cultivation. He has only just begun. You shouldn't mistake an elementary school student who has just begun his studies for a college graduate. Tried prodigies who advance very quickly in their studies are not that common. In fact, they are extremely rare. You should be very clear about the Dharma. I didn't say this earlier because I wanted to see how much wisdom you all had. If a person hasn't cut off the delusion of views and the delusion of thought, how can he have realized any fusion? It would be impossible. January nineteen eighty three. 
he hasn't realized any fruition yet. Those are all false states. Even if he has broken through form, feeling, thinking, formations, and consciousness, he still hasn't realized any fruition. He's just traveling on the path of cultivation, that's all. If he had realized any fruition, he would become irreversible. How could a demon possess him? Even a person who has realized the first fruition cannot be possessed by a demon. March 1983, the Hot Sutra says, He illuminated the five skandhas and saw that they are all empty and he crossed beyond all suffering and difficulty. One who has broken through the five skandhas has merely understood the principle of emptiness. He certainly hasn't ended birth and death or attained any fruition. He is still walking on the path of cultivation and has not reached his destination yet. So he can't be said to have ended birth and death. He has understood the principle of emptiness, which is a partial view, and at this point he feels that there isn't any suffering and there isn't any happiness. If he were to stop at this point, he would fall into an external path. If he continues to progress, then it will be possible for him to become enlightened and to realize the fruition, but he must be rigorous. Therefore, in consideration, no matter the level you reach, if you become satisfied with what little you have attained and feel you've gone far enough, then you are simply limiting yourself and quitting when you're only halfway there. That will be as far as your understanding goes, and you will make no further progress. Sutra, down and confused living beings do not evaluate themselves. Encountering such situations, their minds are confused by their individual likings and past hobbies, so they stop to rest in what they take to be the ultimate refuge. They claim to have perfected and surpassed body, thus uttering a great lie. After their karmic retribution, as eternalists and deviant demons comes to an end, they will fall into the relentless hells. The sound hearers and those enlightened by conditions cannot make further progress. Commentary Dull and confused living beings do not evaluate themselves. Living beings are obstinate and intractable in their delusion. They do not stop to consider just what they are. They haven't shed their dark eyes and pig skins, yet they claim to be Buddhas. They really overestimate themselves. Encountering such situations, their minds are confused by their individual likings and past hobbies. Individual likings refer to their personal desires and greedy attachments, which have confused and uh, stupefied their minds in life after life. So, they stop to rest in what they take to be the ultimate refuge. They figure to have reached a treasure trove but in fact, they are abiding in a transformed city. That transformed city is not the treasure trove. These people were on the quest for treasures, but after going halfway, they grew weary and decided to give up. At that point, a person with spiritual powers conjured up a city and told them, the treasure trove is just up ahead. We can go there and collect all the treasures. We can bring back all sorts of precious and rare jewels. The idea was that after they got there and took a rest, they could continue onwards. But all the people went to the transformed city and thinking it was the treasure trove, they rested and did not go further. They say this is their final place of refuge, the place that they want to go. They claim to have perfected unsurpassed body. They claim to have realized unsurpassed body and become Buddhas already, thus uttering a great lie. They haven't attained Buddhahood, but they say they have. Wouldn't any intelligent person say such a stupid thing? To say you've reached a position that you haven't reached is just being stupid. In a democratic country, we say everyone can become president. True, everyone has to put the potential to become president, but that doesn't mean everyone is the president. 
You have to be elected to office before you actually are the president. You can't just say that everyone is a president. Then who is the real president? Who is the vice president? Is the same principle here. If you've never gone to school or studied anything and you don't even know how to sign your name, could you really become the president? It's the same with becoming a Buddha. If you haven't cultivated and you don't have what it takes to spend six years in the Himalayas or 49 days under, under the Bodhi tree, if you haven't put in even one day in su of such effort, how could you become a Buddha? That would be too easy. That's crazy. After their comic retribution as externalist and Devin demons becomes to an end, comes to an end after the demonic karma they incurred has come to an end, they fall, they will fall into the relentless house. Their lives as demons will also come to an end at some point. When that happens, they will fall into the relentless house. The sub heroes and those enlightened by conditions cannot make further progress. If fixed nature South heroes or fixed nature Pratika Buddhas utter a great lie, they will not fall into the house. However, they won't be able to advance either. They cannot make further progress. Sutra of all of you should cherish the resolve to sustain the way of the Tathagata. After my nirvana transmit this Dharma door to those in the Dharma ending age, universally causing living beings to awaken to its meaning, do not let the demons of fields cause them to create their own grave offenses and fall. Protect, comfort, and compassionately rescue them and dispel evil conditions. Enable them to enter the Buddha's knowledge and understanding with your body and mind so that from the beginning to the final accomplishment, they never go astray. Commentary All of you, Ananda, and all the great Bodhisattvas, great Ahas, great Bishops, great Elders, and others in this assembly should cherish the resolve to sustain the way of the Tathagata. You should honor the principles spoken by the Tathagata. After my Nirvana, transmit this Dharma door of the Suragama Sutra, that of directing the hearing inward to listen to the inherent nature. Until the nature attains the unsurpassed way, transmit this Dharma door of perfect penetration to those in the Dharma ending age. You should transmit this every day to those in the Dharma ending age, universally causing living beings to awaken to its meaning. Let all living beings understand these principles clearly. Do not let the demons of views cause them to create their own grave offenses and faults. They are demons of views and demons of views and love. When people see states, demons of views cause them to be moved by the states. Sometimes people see things give rise to love and get turned by those states. That's the demons of views and demons of views of and love. Don't let them cause people to create offenses and fall. Protect, comfort, and compassionately rescue them, all living beings, and dispel evil and improper conditions. Subdue the crazy mind and wide nature. Put an end to wrong knowledge and views. Enable them to enter the Buddha's knowledge and understanding with the body and mind so that from the beginning to the final accomplishment, they never go astray. Do not allow them to be sidetracked as they walk on the proper path.